All right, there's three cylindrical surfaces at different centimeters. Oh, shoot. There we go. There's three cylindrical surfaces at um, different charge densities and at, with different radiuses. And then we want to find D at, one, at some point P. Okay, well, let's start drawing this out. Um, so our problem looks something like this. In three dimensions, You're going to have three infinite cylinders and then you have some point out here and we want to know what the flux looks like, how the flux is affected. Um, and obviously this is very confusing to look at it like this from the z-axis. So we're going to have to uh, we're going to switch down to the xy plane as if we're looking down the xy plane. So I'm going to make an xy map like this. This is x, y, circle here. Another circle. And now we have to realize that this vector here is going to have no z component. And be, that's because these cylinders run infinitely. Oh, man, I just deleted these. Um, since these cylinders are infinite along z, there's going to be no component of z. Because uh, there's an equal amount of charge up here as there is down here relative to that point. So P has no Z component. And just to make that more clear, D of, of P. D, the, you know, the electric field, the electric flux density at point P. Okay. So the next thing we could do to simplify the problem is realize that at some radius, if we find if we find the radius of the flux that the point is on, it's going to be the this equivalent because these are cylinders and they have flux going outwards, and the the flux at say this point is going to be the same as the flux at this point. Okay. So let's find out what radius this point piece it's on. Well, that's simple. You just take uh, Pythagorean theorem. What is this? Take one squared and plus two squared equals 5 squared. So r is equal to root 5. Okay. So now we know, and we also have one more circle out here. So we know there's one This is a radius 5. This green one is r equals 1 centimeter. And these are all centimeter. This is centimeter 2. r equals 2 centimeter. And then lastly, we have this blue one. So these three cylinders or the cylinders affecting the black cylinder right in question. So now the next thing we need to realize is how many, which ones are actually going to play a role. Well by Gauss's law we know if a charge is inside an object the flux is going to come out 
and the flux is going to be equal to the charge inside the object, right? But since this blue one is outside, is outside the, uh, the the radius in question, it's almost as if we have a charge out here, and then we have some surface here. That's almost this is almost what it looks like. So what happens is the flux is going to go here, and then it's going to go straight out again. So then the net flux from the R equals three centimeters is going to be zero. And that's because it's not inside this radius. So now, a sip of water. We know that this outer radius is irrelevant, okay? So we need to find the charge of these two, and we need an equation to find um, the electric flux intent, the electric flux density of the two cylinders inside this this R equals five, and that equation is D. equals rho, oh wait, no, A, rho S over rho in the rho direction. So we know all these components. So let's start with the red one. D1 equals one centimeter times 20 nanocoulombs per meter squared over these five centimeters in the arrow direction. Point eight nine now it calls for meter squared. Okay, now we find D two. So negative eight and two centimeters. So negative eight nanocombs. This is just plug and chug. Negative zero point seven one five nanocoulombs per meter squared. And now we add those two. The total is equal to these two added together. So. 
No, okay, looks right. Point eight nine minus equals one point seven five. Now columns per meter squared, or roughly one point eight now columns per meter squared. Um what's next? So the last thing we need to do is find the actual direction. So we found, so this is at one centimeter, two centimeter, so it's like right about here. It's going to be here. So we found that we have a direction of 1.8. We need to find the actual um, the actual components. So our, right now we have something that looks like this, a vector. Looks like this. It's 1.8 you know, coulombs. But now we need to find out what the horizontal and vertical components are. So we gotta find out we gotta find out what angle this is. That's sixty three point four degrees. And now we apply this angle to the vector here. Sorry, I was a little confused there for a second. I had to think about it. Um, so now D is going to be equal to 1.8 cosine of this angle plus 1.8 sine of this angle. And Oh, it's going to be in the AX direction, AY. All we've done is we've taken this and we've made an X and Y component. And we already knew, we already knew where to get the angle from because it gave us the X and Y um, length essentially right here. Like we knew, we knew where on the, on the circle we had the answer so I'm sorry I'm, this this video is not as good as I'd like it to be maybe I'll try and redo it later but. end up with this Okay, thanks, goodbye.